Good morning and welcome to worship this day. We give thanks that this community joins together both here in this space, the limited number and those of you, the countless people who sign on and worship together, we give you thanks. Food for thought as we begin worship today. There's a commission that started yesterday and it was called the 912 Commission. And it was the purpose of it is to bring um, people together in the United States of America after 9-11. And after 9-11, everybody was devastated and then the patriotic movement that came together to bring the country back together. And I think it's a good, I think that's a good thing to do because we can all remember how we felt that day, how people were flocking into churches and how people were, were giving thanks to God for people who were safe and at the same time commending people's bodies of those who had died. So I, I think that's a good thing. But I think that we as Christians have to be Easter people. We have to remember what Jesus went through for us so that we can be Sunday morning Easter people, which is why we gather and worship on Sundays. So today, especially, let's give thanks for that group of people, those close-knit disciples who came together to praise and worship God after they had witnessed his death. That now they live in the resurrection and we too live in the resurrection today. So let's give thanks to God for that as we worship today. So continue to prepare your hearts.
stand and face the baptismal <coughs> mark. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who sustains, creates, and redeems us in all of creation. Amen. Amen. As broken children, we begin worship by acknowledging our sinfulness and asking for God's forgiveness. So let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God in the King Almighty.
we pray together. O oh Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated wherever you are, and I invite you to turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 50. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we're here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God.
second reading is from Romans chapter 14, 1 through 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord, and those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to, the, to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. So Peter came and he said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus answered Peter, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of God may be compared to a king who wished to settle an account with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to the owner. And as he could not repay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same forgiven slave, as he went out, he came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And the forgiven slave seized him by the throat, and he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me, and I will pay you. But the forgiven slave, he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slave saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported it to their Lord, all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned the forgiven slave, and he said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I have mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother and sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. 
Please be seated. I invite the students to, to come near so they can, can hear completely. So I know that school has started back in some form or fashion and, and some of us want to be there. A lot of us don't, right? Some of us want to be there. But we want to be there because we are called to continue to learn and to grow. But I have a question to you. Maybe some of you have the same group of friends that you had last year. But some of you may be regrouped and maybe you are in a different group of friends this year. I'm going to go ahead and break the news to you. One of your new friends is going to hurt your feelings. But it's all about how we handle it when our feelings get hurt, isn't it? Because sometimes when our feelings are hurt, we are not able to look at a bigger picture. You'll hear a longer story in the other sermon in a little while, so I want you to listen to that too. But sometimes when our feelings get hurt, sometimes we just have to sit back and realize that people didn't do it intentionally and they didn't want to hurt our feelings intentionally. Sometimes it's a misunderstanding. Sometimes it's simply we didn't hear everything. I know it's going to be hard for y'all to believe, but sometimes parents and other people don't listen to all the words we say either. And we certainly know that you students, we, you don't hear everything. So I pray this day that when you find this new group of friends, that you make new friends and you make new fellow disciples in Christ and, and understand that sometimes your feelings are going to get hurt. That's what our sermon's about today. It's about forgiveness and understanding. So can we pray together? Let us pray. Gracious God, yep, sometimes our feelings get hurt. And sometimes we are not quite the people that you created us to be. Not that pure person who came out of baptism and joined into this community. But sometimes we get a little rusty. So God, be with us as we work through the rust and we try to reconcile ourselves to one another and forgiveness as you taught us today. So we thank you that you love us, and we thank you that you accompany us every second of this journey. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you pray with me the prayer of preparation? Holy God, you have a word for me today. Make my heart soft and plant your word in me in order that it may bear fruit in your kingdom. Amen. So surely, mom goes through the carpool line. That's another sermon. But mom goes through the carpool line and she gets up there and she picks up little Susie. And little Susie gets in the car and mom knows something's up with Susie. But she just lets him sit in the silence as they drive those couple of miles home. And when they get home, little Susie has all that she can take and they get in the house and she just burst into tears and she cries and cries and mom consoles her and she cries and cries and and when she begins to not cry as loud mom says to her what's wrong and the little girl said one of my friends hurt my feelings today and mom continues to console and said how did, how did she hurt your feelings? And she said, she wouldn't sit by me at lunch. And it hurt my feelings, and I don't want her to be my friend anymore. And the little girl at that point, her tears dry up, and she goes and does her homework. But did you hear in that little illustration what mom's response was? When she hears her crying, what'd she say? What's wrong? What, what's wrong? You see, because mom understands, and we as Christians too understand, that we are to be living in a world of happiness and joy. And when we see somebody crying, the first thing we think is something went wrong. Amen? 
Something went wrong. I'm not condemning mom because moms are like this a lot, but we try to fix things. Amen. <laughs> so we try to fix things. So, so mom says, don't worry, Susie. It was probably a misunderstanding. She probably didn't mean to hurt your feelings. And maybe tomorrow you'll be able to work it out. You see, today, this Gospel of Matthew, I have to remind you that this Gospel of Matthew, these couple of chapters, Matthew is only talking to his closest inner circle. We're still in chapter 18, and he's still talking to those closest groups of people. And they all speak the same language. They all have this backing. They understand what this language means to one another. So when Matthew says that Peter says, what happened if somebody sins against me? The first thing we're thinking is like, what, what does sin against, against what, what does a member of the church sin and what does that mean? Well, keep in mind one thing, Matthew added that little phrase in the church. Because it's not until after, the church, after Jesus' resurrection until the church is established, Right? It's not till later. So Matthew's added that little piece for some clarity, kind of some insider language there. But he wants to know, what do, I, what do we do? Because I know it's hard to believe, but, but congregations much like this, not us, but people very like, much like us, sometimes we, we get little tips and we don't really, at the end, don't really know what we were arguing about. And it happens sometimes. And... This group of disciples must have already experienced some little tiffs as they are going through with Jesus and they're walking through. Remember the Pharisees and Sadducees don't like them, right? They don't like them. So some people are already starting to give, us, give them a little bit of um, conflict. So Peter wants to know, uh, what are we supposed to do? I'm going to turn that question around. And ask Jesus, if I sin, are you going to forgive me one time? To which Jesus answers, not once, but seven. And not just seven, but 77 times. So Jesus forgives. Remember each, each Sunday, well, most Sundays, if we don't change the liturgy around a little bit, but we, we begin with coming to the font and confessing our sins and asking for forgiveness, and we receive that forgiveness. And then we are made new and whole, and as we, in a perfect world, and then as we process into the church, we face and we are made right with God, and we face the altar as we continue our worship. Forgiveness. It's about being made whole again. Remember last week it was about how do you handle if, if somebody bothers you, you take one or two. And it was that same the theory um, and theme of reconciliation. So now Peter has kind of turned it and said, reconciliation, we first have to forgive before we can experience that reconciliation. We want reconciliation. We want restoration. We want the tears to stop. And we want mamas and daddies to stop saying what's wrong. We want everybody to just be happy and live in a community that's full of love and reconciliation. So sometimes, in order for reconciliation to happen, we have to go through the pains of forgiveness. And we have to go through that understanding that forgiving makes us whole again. And forgiving also brings us into that reminder that why we want to be reconciled. Because we want to be made whole again to worship God. And to be in God's sight, whole and pure and right. Sometimes... Sometimes we just make good attempts at these things, but we're not to just attempt them. We're not just to say, oh, I forgive you, and you know you didn't mean it. Oh, I forgive you, 
you, you got to wholeheartedly forgive one another so that we can accomplish reconciliation. Accomplishing reconciliation and wholeness and completeness, which is what seven means. Seven means completeness. So if I say you were forgiven seven times, that means you are forgiven completely. But Jesus' language, that ain't enough. We have to forgive seven, seven, 77 times completely so that we can be reconciled back into community. So what does Jesus say to us today in this text? As we come in the doors as broken children and, and we're crying, what does he say to us? What's wrong, my child? What's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. And we read off our confession. And then he says, your sins are forgiven. That wedge that was making the two girls be sad is now a wedge of forgiveness that Jesus takes away. It's that wedge that comes between that Jesus just takes out. And he takes it out not one Sunday, but next Sunday and the Sunday after that. But we don't sin just so that that wedge comes in and Jesus can take it out, but rather because we sin, Jesus is going to take that wedge out to make us whole. The only wedge I like missing is a wedge and a piece of pie. <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> yeah. We don't want wedges. And Peter was asking, what happens when that wedge gets in there, Jesus? And Jesus says, you got to remove it. And you got to remove it as many times as that wedge shows up. So Jesus says to us today, nothing's wrong. You are whole, you are complete, you are full this day. So worship me. Remove all those barriers from your brain that keeps you from seeing me completely. Remove all of those little wedges so that you see me fully, you see me in a complete rainbow, you see me fully that I love you. So today, that's what reconciliation and forgiveness looks like for us. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies and Sunday schools, confirmation classes and youth ministry. Nurture new ministries of education and growth. This would have been rally day for many churches. So continue to bless the education ministries of this church and churches around the world as we continue our distance learning and studies. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, to renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Bring healing and justice where harm is dealt. Provide vindication for those who are oppressed. Free victims of trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who are hunger. Guard refugees fleeing famine and poverty and war. Heal those for whom your special care this day. We especially pray for those we know by name in this congregation. We lift to you Patricia Backman, Alberta Berry, Hazel Bacchus, Nell Buff, Lila Catt, Lynn Kraut, Margie Hook, Reverend Everett Price, June Roof, Tom Roof, Lois Watson, and Lena Wessinger. And God, we also bring before you these names that need special healing and continuation of healing. Bryce Addy, Jeff Bucknam, Becky Kuhn, Rodney Oswald, Jean Schofield, and Susie Wattenberger. And God, our list goes on. So now hear all of those names that we name out loud and bring to you. Or was it sister? Jane. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, O oh Lord, we entrust to your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
We give thanks for these gifts and we pray together. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks for the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it's our duty and it's our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. And so it was, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took a cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. So with this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us. Forgiving us, teaching us, leading us, and guiding us. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Jesus. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread and raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and then send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Come Holy Spirit. Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God, incarnate power of the Most High. One God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So come to this banquet table where Christ gives himself as food and drink. So I invite you to call the church office during the week and stop by and receive this holy meal that fills our souls.
Amen. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. So now receive this, Cindy. There is no place where God does not live. There is no moment when God has, is, or will not be present. And there is no time that God does not love you. So now may you go forth into the world knowing that God is right by your side. Amen. Amen. now may you go in peace and forgive as you have been forgiven thanks Thanks be to God. god
And remember, following worship today, we'll have Sunday school. So if you did not get that link in your constant contacts on Friday, feel free to drop me an email or a text, and I will send you that link immediately. So now, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.